Hey, it's Tony Bruski, and this is our Week in Review. Over the weekend, taking a look back at some of the most compelling conversations and stories that we've covered for you of the last week. Brand new episodes back Monday morning, bright and early, 5 a.m. here on the podcast. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruski. We are being joined by Robin Dreek, retired FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, discussing Corey Richens. The Google search history is very interesting. Is this something where people are are just forgetting that, you know, people can look up your search histories when you're searching for things like signs of being under federal investigation and uh, how to uh, change cause of death on a death certificate uh, in, in luxury prisons for the rich in America? <laughs> She's obviously not someone that follows true crime podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, obviously. I mean, I mean, that is, you know, the only thing when I was reading that uh, last night, the thing that really struck me behaviorally with that is here's the behavior. Uh, well, well let, let me here, we'll, we'll do the thought experiment question. Okay. Is that the behavior of someone that has high or low confidence that she's going to be exonerated from what she's being accused of? <laughs> yes. Well, she seemed to think she had a plan, and it took damn near a year for her to be arrested. Uh, it, on the surface, you know, writing the book was interesting, but that's interesting. That's one of the things that was in her search history as well. How to hire someone to write a book for you was one of the searches. So it, it makes me wonder, you know, this is something that she was kind of plotting along the way and how to steer people away from thinking that she has anything to do with this. I, I don't know. It, it's just uh, it seems like an obvious uh, track or a path or a footprint that she could have easily avoided. She's really fascinating, um, scary and horrible and horrendous as the outcome is, again, if she's guilty. Mm -hmm. And that is she had a pattern, according to her deceased husband, of trying to kill him that he was kind of vocal about with other people. Yeah, And it's hard to imagine she didn't hear about that in some circles, in some ways or some innuendos, even in a mm -hmm. half joking way. And if she was, I, it just kind of always boggles my mind how how dumb people can be, again, if she's guilty of the breadcrumbs throughout the pattern of her life that she's left that say, of course it's you. I mean, it just, it's just, it's, and then again, the, the, out of all that's going on with her, as I was shocked by, by how obviously she was and and now again to her defense i think the defense attorney is going to really play up the the witness uh, that sold her the methamphetamines mm -hmm. just because okay it's a really good first hand account but it also it's going to go to the credibility of the witness um kind of but we have recent indications that you know even in the Lori Daybell um Valu trial th that you have some really crazy witnesses in that as well, but they're credible enough for the jury. And so I think you're probably going to see the same thing going in here. But yeah, just those searches that she did just to me showed someone that was kind of resolved in a sense that, well, I kind of screwed this up. I better figure out how to make the best of a mm -hmm. situation that's going to go sideways for me. Well, I, I found it amusing to even have anyone think that there are luxury prisons for the rich in America, like as if you can go like pick it out on, uh, like travelocity, like certainly there there are there's white collar prisons, but there there's not like luxury prisons. And you know, and with that, did she did she hate her husband enough to want to kill him mm -hmm. to get the insurance money so she could pay for a luxury prison? I mean, what what was the? <laughs> I mean, just what? Would you, or wouldn't it be easier just to get a divorce? I mean, I just I, it just again the the. I'm always more fascinated, not just by what we're seeing in the present, but what's been the pattern throughout her life that created this this way she thinks and cognates and perceives the universe around her that she came to this conclusion of, again, if it's her that or or whoever it was closely associated with this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just it just boggles the mind doesn't it it just it does and an observation i've made this is not scientific whatsoever but i've dealt with pretty severe narcissists uh, in my lifetime 
Uh, mm -hmm. I, what I have noticed is that when it comes to decision making, it has nothing to do with murder or crime. Uh, oftentimes, they will take a path that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It may get from point A to point B, but you may have to go to like Q, X, and Z right. first to get there. And when you try and explain, no, I mean, you could just really do this. They don't want to do it because their way they believe is better, even if it's insanely inefficient, makes little to no sense. But if it's their way, that's the way they're going to do it. So I'm, I'm not super surprised that someone like this would have this idea that uh, this was the best path for her of having murdering her husband, allegedly, and then writing a children's book and doing this or that where you could have just gotten divorced. But instead, you know, I, that yeah. that was the path. Yeah, and, and it really goes to show, again, let, let's do a thought experiment here on this yeah. one. Let, let's assume that it's her and assume that she's a legitimate psychopath, which mm -hmm. shows little empathy, you know, and compassion, understanding for others and the consequences of their actions and their impact on others, kind of like Lori Daybell. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing is what you're seeing is if you're assuming that you're seeing actually intellect still plays a part in it. It's not just a psychopath does X, Y, and Z. No, you got to, there's some psychopaths that are serial killers that are a lot smarter than others. Sure. So that still plays an impact because here, if, if indeed she is psychopathic, if indeed she is the murderer, it shows a really, really low level of intellect for how she went about doing this. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.